What's up, guys, and welcome back to the Try Time Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Callum. And this is episode 86, or also known as the one in between the two game test series. Yeah, the one with... It fit, almost, it's weird, actually, because it feels like we haven't actually done one of these for that long because we did that last week too early. And, of course, as we predicted, we ended up missing fucking everything that happened in, in Rugby League. I mean, we but said... Geez, Wakefield won. We got some IMG stuff that's... <laughs> and a bit boring because it's just the exact same promotion relegation we would have had anyway. So basically, it's all a bit of a damn squib. And we move on. We've battered some South Sea Islanders. What more is there to touch on? Oh, yeah. It's, it's given us a lot to digest this week. Um, but I mean, Wes, do you want to start with? Do you want to get the IMG out of the way? And like the- I, that long ago, I think I want to get Wakey out of the way. Well done, boys. Yeah, fair play. Now, well, you're not the best player in the championship anymore. Welcome to Super League. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I mean, it's an in- it's just they kind of swept to lose away easier than obviously easier than they swept York away, and a bit surprising really. But it was one of them. I, I don't think. Oh, well, that one side, I won't even going to touch it anymore. That I'm going to say move yeah, straight. That's what on. I mean. <laughs> um, it's not even like fair play to lose at this point. Um, well, I mean, it is because they still got there, which is more than what you did. Fuck How did they get there again? <laughs> well, yeah, that's fine. I mean, I'm I'm happy. I mean, to lo- more speaking about Toulouse, I guess t- goes into the IMG because I f- like for me the big talking point is how close Toulouse actually was to Salford, and you know, you got to think with Toulouse like they not they don't go in the Challenge Cup, they don't go in the 1895, and I know they're not that's not going them being in that, and if they did well in that would catapult them above Salford, but these certain sacrifices that they do make, even probably financially as well, paying the teams to travel over and having to pay and travel over themselves, probably knocks them down financially a bit as well. Like they are close to Salford. It's you know it's it's closer than it. When the newly rebranded from next year, the quarter of an IMG point game as opposed to the million pound game, <laughs> way more catchy. Love that title, guys. Yeah, it's gonna keep. It's gonna make it interesting. Because it ain't just Toulouse who are sniffing around that border mark. The interesting thing is, and it's it's kind of what I don't think we've ever actually touched on on the pod, is the performance review is every is free yearly. So, for example, like oh, Salford, yeah, I've definitely mentioned that on the pod. Maybe maybe we have, but we haven't talked much IMG for a while. To be fair, but to be fair, that because they just did nothing for ages other than exist in a corner. Somewhere. Yeah, no, no, definitely. But like. For example, to lose what are they going off of a two-two, and then next season they will be favourites for the championship. If they go two-two-one, that's their three-year period. Then, because the year before that, obviously they're in Super League, but that's an all mess anyway. But what I'm saying is, if Salford have a shit season, they could be fucked. But then I know you know they're going to do off-field stuff, don't you? That you know that they're not going like to the rumored that. signing of everyone's favourite French pudding. Go on. Have I missed this? Justin Braid in the hair, Sangare. Oh, yeah. Wow. Not confirmed, but very heavily rumoured. Probably confirmed by the time this goes out. We're recording it on Monday night. so. Hey, we've only got two days. I'm fancy, I'm fancy hedging my bets here. You never know, mate, to be honest. You never know. We're rugby league at this rate, man. All could happen. But, but yeah, so I think it, it's interesting. I mean... I'm kind of glad we didn't have to speak about it when it was fresh last week because obviously a lot of the discourse on social media were, were shitting on Bradford who didn't get the score that they'd, well, that Gledel had basically tweet, tweeted out. And it's like, <laughs> makes it, I, def, I think he does get some unfair like abuse, but he, he sets himself up for it, to be honest, with certain stuff. And I, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't, I think his art's in the right place. And he's, but when he's, posting stuff he's hoping at the same time that what he's posting is true like and so it's a tricky one really but I mean what's killing Bradford on we're speaking three yearly performances we obviously the last two seasons we finished third the season before that I think we finished eighth or ninth it's just not good enough especially when York have been consistently up like in that in the playoffs and in that sort of conversation so yeah, it's, t- it's tight though, isn't it, really? It's tight in them spots. It's going to be interesting as well because London, not a million miles away and bar this year in Super League, they've got some very bang average championship performance scores in there. Even the year they went up, of course, or they're finishing, I think, sixth, was it, and making a run in the playoffs? 
Yeah, fifth it was, but yeah, yeah. Oh, no, definitely. So they've definitely they... got room to grow that three-year average over the next review period. Obviously, yeah, I mean, York we... going as one of the favourites next year, along with Toulouse and Bradford, so pressure there, potentially. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting to see what London's approach is. Obviously, we know a lot of the, the back route, the sort of back room up uh, opinion on IMG and what's happened and stepping away and things like that. And it'll be interesting to see what actually team they do assemble for next season. Because if they assemble a team, you know, spend the money that they probably have got and assemble a team good enough to challenge, then, you know, they've got a good chance. But I also can see them finishing like seventh and eighth and not really recruiting, you know, to the level that they need to, to compete. Because at the end of the day, there's teams, you, you know, you're looking at, to lose Bradford, York, like they are strong championship teams. Like they've proved that this year. Even Featherstone, Featherstone, he hadn't clicked for them under Ford last season, really. But on paper, they've still got some great players. Ford, really. But no, I don't think Ford's ever had anything kick on, to be honest. Apart from fucking. Lee I mean, I could get a Fiesta from Scrappy out, and there'd be more clicking in that Ford than this one. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say I think he's only really ever found true success when he were got York promoted from League One, but. I think anyone could have done that. Uh, could have done that, really. Um, kind of living off that, I think, a bit. But so that's probably IMG down to a T. They've been a lot and nothing at all. Yeah, Keithley on the up, man. I tell you, Keithley hate IMG, but they've somehow. I was as such bollocks in it. Like Ke- Keithley up that high, like they hate IMG. I had to put my bottom <laughs> just for that fact, man. Uh, and the best thing is, it's another league one score for them next year. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Well, guys. And then interesting, Oldham obviously have spent a lot of money squad wise, and but now I guess this IMG kind of proves that if they want to develop further as a club to get to where they want to be, they maybe need to develop. Well, the next more. job is going. They're going to have to keep doing that performance wise because replacing those championship with League One scores is going to do a lot to strengthen the position. No, oh, definitely. Obviously, yeah. then they're going to have to have the infrastructure around that, but. There's no, it's a double edged sword, really, because there's no point spending on all this infrastructure if you then have a shit squad and can't go up on performance. But there's also no point winning the league every year if your infrastructure is never going to be enough to get you in Super League. No, yeah, no, that's what I mean. And I think they've already retained a lot of players and got a good team going for next season anyway. So it's just what changes they can make around that. And well, it's and, Super League 2014 dream team basically down there, isn't it? Oh, I'm going to say, yeah. Um, it's just, it's a weird team, but... I mean, I you've got to think, it was a long time ago, those guys were in Super League. I mean, Jordan Turner, what? It's grand finals for St. Helens and Castleford. Jamie Ellis probably fitted in a medium back then. Like, this is a long time ago. A lot has happened since then. Oh, no, definitely. But, I mean, they're a club taking the, making the right strides, I guess, and, and stuff, so... Yeah, I mean, other stuff. Back then, the last time we recorded, we didn't know if Bradford had just announced they were letting O'Carroll o- o- go in. We hadn't really heard all else on that, to be this honest. This is still the news taking over. Yeah, no, so you that's... don't know where he's going either. No, and that had even been announced at Saints, which is, um, yeah. Um, the only thing that kind of came out of that was that, obviously, Matty Smith ended up moving over from Saints women over to Wigan, um, which is a legend. That's his new opportunity. Yeah, allegedly he'd been sleeping, what, what it, faffing around with, with Jodie Cunningham, were it? Oh, is he living your dream? I'm not... I knew you were going to say something about that, yeah. Yeah, I'm not jealous at all. Yeah, you set yourself up for that one. <laughs> uh, the number of comments I've had to listen to you make about that woman this year, it's like... No, but it's all in good taste. Don't You don't make me out to be a monster, mate. OK, yes, they weren't, like, pesty or, or, or creepy, but still... And also, a lot of what I say about her is like she's like unreal at rugby. Like you also do give her that, yes. Yeah, like just that her outfits on Sky do, do her some favors is the main one. <laughs> but I wasn't even saying it when she was on Sky. I was saying it in person actually. Um, but, but yeah, anyway, I think that's probably IMG boxed off and everything. I mean, we'll do a pod probably in a month or so in in the off depths of the off season on. What is this? Yeah. The content farming when we've got nothing to talk yeah. about. Well, the, well, What's speaking about week's breaking news? We're gonna have sold a ticket. 
So we'll we'll probably I don't even know what we'll co- just cover what our thoughts are on it. Maybe go a bit more of a deep dive into it. That'll be around the depths where we're like you know predicting the eighteen ninety five groups and stuff like that. Like that. Oh, when I get to call the wrong name about fifteen times in a pod yeah. again. Yeah, <laughs> they they're good times though when you're just doing stuff like that. Um, so I'm looking forward to doing some like. I don't even know what like we obviously will have the awards coming up. They'll be we fairly we touch with currently part Saturday videos until then. Yeah, I'm gonna say we we're taking a bit of a time off doing the Saturdays. Um only from I don't we don't know how long it'll be, but it's like in once we get to January, we're gonna be doing the team previews for Super League. So it's gonna be two I was videos. Tasked with recording Wakefield. I'm burnt out of doing them all or and also Wakefield did not inspire me in the slightest. So you are slightly responsible for this decision as a club. Also, that account on Twitter has stole his idea and done every club that's ever fucking existed. So it kind of The it, followers now, you can't be mean. <laughs> no, I'm not being mean, I'm just saying. I like, called uh, out on it and grew the pod by getting another follower. Okay, it works. Um, Offensive marketing, it's a great way to go. We're basically Ryanair with rugby now. <laughs> but one last thing I'll say on that is if you like listening and watching and you've got a great idea for like for a Saturday video, um, and in the past people have given us ideas, please let us know and we'll actually credit you and not just steal it like everyone else does. Yeah, we'll get it you serious about rugby league. If you want to hear us speak about, I don't know. You want to speak about League One coaches? Tell us, and we might do a video on it. Because it's not like we're just stopping. If we we just don't have any many ideas at the minute. No one's ever asked for a video now. on League One coaches. No, that's no, but that's <laughs> a rare one. But no, but someone asked for Nick. Can you just randomly mid season last year? I can't remember the name, but I did credit in the video the top what, top twelve top ten second rowers in Super League. Yeah, that's spawned an entire series. Exactly, that's what I mean. So give us some sort of ideas. I don't know, top, like, you know, I don't this know. This is street. a throwback. Top five things about you that reminds everyone of Callum Walker and his clickbait. <laughs> <laughs> top five, um, I don't know, top five streets won't forget Super League players, I don't know. Top five Jodie Cunningham appearances of 2024. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. We know you will. Um, but yeah, uh, so let us know. We're we'll like a bloody video. South Park by end of recording that video. Right. So should we get on to England against Samoa then? What, before I get you cancelled and locked yeah, up? Yeah, yeah, let's not, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> let's not do that. Right, we're, are we starting at the very beginning then? What? The hacker? Slash Mikey Lewis. Yeah, that. that. And... Gordon, because I've forgotten exactly what order his last name comes in. Yeah, going head to head, Chan, doesn't it? Something like that. Yeah, that um, fella. Yeah, uh, I mean, it, I were watching this not in the op- op- optimal environment. Obviously, I wish we I were there, and we both do. But I was watching it on a laptop while sat in a skate park. So that you know that gives you a bit of uh, this gives you an insight into what Callum's life looks like. That's, While that's, I was in a normal room with a TV, yeah, you know, being a normal human being. I was working, that is why, which I'm not gonna go in depth, depth to that anyway. But yeah, so like, what, I, 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 what I, but I, I did watch <laughs> I did watch that the hacker like closely watch that. Um and it was incredible to see that live too. I couldn't believe that it was happening really because I knew that off of that it, blow up more in the mainstream media as well which it did it seemed i saw it getting posted around rugby union groups obviously bbc sport were all over it anyway and, and coverage of the game were really good on social media with that um so i think it's great for the game and also it's it's a, it was a sign of respect at the end of the day don't get me wrong i thought michael lewis were going to like spit on him or something and it was going to be an all-out brawl but no i think it will manage yeah, really save well. that for like the 77th minute really yeah <laughs> Yeah, that I mean that will later on it, but I mean, and we'll come. To, we will come to that, but that's like we're going to the game on Saturday. Like that scrap at the end just makes me yeah, more excited. Way, and sub to the channel, you might want to share. I forgot about it, but I remembered halfway through. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, we always forget. Always forget that. I remembered when I was on my own. No, so did I. I see. I feel like it's easy to remember when you're on your own, but we just get off on tangents, don't we? That's why. But um, 
But yeah, I think that were great. It, obviously, it was great as it always is when you get to see sort of whether like Samoa, Tonga, New Zealand, whoever it is who come over and do that sort of cultural dance, I guess you'd call it, or ritual before a game. It's always interesting to see. And this one were probably the most heated I've seen in a while, which is weird because it is just a test. You know, if I'd, if this were like World Cup semi-final, you'd have expected it a bit more, wouldn't you? But um, yeah, it, 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 it was cool. It was revenge, remember? God. Do you remember? Yeah, all that, maybe that's what it is. Isn't it? Yeah. In it. Although I don't, half of the bloody Samoa team didn't even play in that game. Neat and same with England team. So, I mean, oh, Mikey Lewis. Yeah, I'm not even there. Yeah, I think Mikey Lewis were on loan at York around that time. So, well, I'm going to say, and Gordon will not there. Yeah, they definitely won. But no, it's, it's good to Which see. Which I he's got like the whole, what is it, South Korean is heritage, something like that? I think so, yeah. Oh, and then what, what's, your, what's your first name? Gordon. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I get you've probably chosen an English name because obviously you're living in an English-speaking country. It's quite a common thing to do. What, how would you land up on Gordon? It's not about that. Is it? Schofield near your broom cupboard, or you might be Gordon the Gopher by the end of it. <laughs> Christ. Uh, I've got well, to bring the references from way older than my age to the pod. That's my job here. Yeah, no, that is true. You are more um, ancient, I guess, or in touch with the I have older, to ease all the demographics that watch our channel. Yeah, yeah, true. True, Not true. true. But I guess, should we go to the select? What were your thought, initial thoughts on selection? We obviously did a bit about that last week, didn't we? Uh, well, it was. It feels weird saying it was a joke given we actually won and. Started really well, but I do think there were some questionable calls in there. Go on, then. Should we? I mean, I think we're going to agree that the backs were probably what, and we we also did call Lewis on bench as well. I would have start like heading into the game. I would have started Marshall over Ashton. Yeah. By the end of the game, I think Ashton proved his point on why actually they're both great. So it's so tough because they are great, great, and you're not going to drop young. Yeah, that's the thing. I think. Certainly, Super League wise, in that in their respective teams, I think Marshall outperformed Ashton this season. But we're talking, it's like the difference between five pound in change or a five pound note. It's both, it's the same thing when it boils down to it. They're both worth the same value to the team. Yeah. They're just slightly better at slightly different things. Yeah, I wouldn't mind Marshall getting playing the second test. And, but I also, Ashton were one of better players on pitch, so you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to be too offended if he goes that way again. Sends, I think, were fundamentally fine. I mean, you knew Fowler had a blinder. That. Newman didn't stand out like a sore thumb. I don't think he's one of England's best players, but obviously, who else have we got in that squad? What are the alternatives? Wardle's injured, and I do not want to see Curry or Bateman playing centre again before I die. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so, yeah, and then what do you reckon halves? I think they were right probably to start with William. Williams were unreal, by the way. Williams, like. fantastic, very deserved player of the match. This is where it gets interesting. So, obviously, pre game BBC put the stats up, and the only thing that Smith beat Lewis on was, was it errors? The only thing he was ahead of Lewis in. You know, the one thing you don't want to be ahead in. They are different players, though. I, won't, I know you're yeah. not saying we should go off that. Like, they're both incredible. And I think, I don't know. I, they're both too good. It's, it's crazy, really. And you're not going to... Williams is the captain, and the, rightfully... The thing is, what are you asking Williams to do, I think, defines who you want him alongside. Are you asking him to be the one that's the creative half, in which case you want Smith? Are you wanting him to settle the game and organise it, in which case you want Lewis? Yeah. And playing how he did, you know, that brought a really strong performance, potentially even the best out of George Williams. No, I think and that's what bro, works better. Don't yeah. fix it. What I do think is, well... I guess this is kind of where I'm going to touch into one of the things I think that did we did get wrong, and I would still stand by changing for Test too. We didn't have a replacement hooker on the bench and chose to start Daryl Clark, which for me now wrong option. 
should be Walker. 100%. Yeah, I agree on that. And I don't know the situation behind it because, I mean, against Tonga, we kind of went with them to rotating, which I also think you can't get, go wrong with that either. But maybe he's giving one of each of them a game each, maybe, which I wouldn't, guess, I wouldn't mind. But I'm, You know, I'm fine if you want to start Clark and put Walker on the bench and rotate them. Because at the end of the day, they're both there in the squad to be used. No, oh, yeah, definitely. But it feels, well, Daryl Clark's not going to be around the next World Cup, let's be honest. He's, what, 35? Maybe a bit younger than that, but yeah, he's probably not going to be around. Or if he is, he's not going to be the number one, is it? And if O'Neill, if arguably if O'Neill were fit... Yeah, he's only 31. Two, Jesus, he's had an hard life. Mind you, he's been at Cass, hasn't he? So what do you expect? He won, did he win the Man of Steel when he was like 21 then? He must have done. That's crazy, you know. Yeah, I mean, back then, ultimately, was probably the outside of like James Roby, the best hooker in the competition. This yeah. is where Danny out and fans start mentioning him. But anyway, one of the best hookers in the competition. Now I think the torch has been passed over. Yeah. You know, there's a reason that you know it's the NRL are chasing Walker and not a couple of years of Clark. Yeah, I mean, also, the, like, the best hooker in Super League isn't even English, is it, let's be honest. So. What, Edwin Ipapa? Yeah, like, let's be honest here. Like, Walker and O'Neill, I think, aren't far behind him, but they are behind him at the end of the day. Yeah, and I think that's the other problem. Like you say, O'Neill's omission is... Because it feels like you're going to probably go with Walker and O'Neill as your best two, assuming they're... Kick, you know, kick on and stay at the level you'd expect today, yeah. and that no one else comes to and really takes the world by storm. Yeah, that. Be- where does Clark fit into that? Because I think the answer is he doesn't. Because unless you're not unless you're going to take three, I don't see where he gets in. Particularly when you've got like Radley who can cover there, and you're probably going to take an extra halfback who could cover there, like like Lewis, for example. I mean, is this England team? Would you be happy? I'm just. I'm not saying they should do this. It's just a, an option. Would you play Lewis at fullback and drop Newman and play Wells being centre? Would that yeah. be better? Better system? Yeah. No. I'm not saying you should do that. I would just sort of playing devil's advocate. Giving it as up. much as it works in rugby league live that time, Wells being centre, I don't think is a practical solution for England. I think he looks weak defensively compared to some of the others there when we did it in the last World Cup. And then obviously we shifted him into the halves, which, again, what well, we didn't really get the best out of him. Likewise, similarly with Mikey Lewis, I don't know why we're trying to shoe on him into another position that's not his first choice when actually what he does, he does very well. I mean, he was great at Oka, to be fair, when he came on, but... At that stage of the game, with the way the game had gone, it worked for him, obviously, in different circumstances. But also, you look at how he was playing at hooker, and it's very similar to how he'd play as a halfback. Yeah. Was, if he sees the gap, take it on. Otherwise, distribute, and then kind of play that supporting run that you'd expect your seven to make. Yeah. We weren't seeing, like, the, tip, the one-handed scoops of, like, the traditional go-forward hookers. No, oh no, no. It felt like a, a non-hooker playing hooker, albeit he did a good job there. Yeah, yeah. It'd have been interesting to see because the game wasn't in a normal rhythm at all then because it were like, Samoa were trying everything to get back in game and then we were sort it was just a mess, a scrappy game. If you see him from minute one to minute 20, you know, where it was a real sort of battle in the middle of the park, it'd have been interesting to see how we managed that. And the thing with Clark is like, he just did a solid job. You know what you're going to get from Clark at the end of the day. Like, he's not going to do much worse than a 7, 8 out of 10, is it? So, that, I can see why he's picked as well. But obviously, I would like to see Walker at the weekend. Yeah. Because he's not dropping Lewis. He's, he's going to start play Lewis off bench again. We know this, don't we? Let's be honest. Unless it's an injury. Yeah, I don't really see you changing the halfback. So. Unless you just dropped Wellsby and played him at fullback. But, but why? Because Wellsby's one of the best players in the squad. Yeah, no, I know. I'm just I'm just saying ways that they could do something differently, but I don't think they will. Um, well, I think we might see more change in the rest of the forwards. Yeah, I mean, what do you reckon to the... We spoke a lot about the prop rotation. I mean, it were kind of like a, a five 
four five. We'll go with just a four man prop. There'll probably four props, won't there, really, in the squad? Yeah. What what are your thoughts on that? I mean, obviously Thompson's gonna be back for this second one and he's definitely gonna play. One hundred percent. Havard and Lees, I think you, on like Havard, we, we spoke about how good Havard is. Havard has a really solid game. He didn't really do much wrong. Or, and to be fair, that's probably one of the best games I've seen Matty Lee have all year. That's it. I told you, mate. A lot of flash. His ceiling's massive, man. Uh, Saints, and deservedly so, because I don't think his performance for St. Helens warranted selection. But a bit like Williams, the year Warrington finished 10, you put him in an England shirt and we just saw like a different player. Yeah, because he's a good player. He's a good player in there. But if, the t- you know, he needs maybe the environment's got to be right for him. And obviously Saints have been a bit of a mess aren't they, at club level with other injuries and stuff. And it's, you know, it's, it's not it's not necessarily easy but yeah. when that's happening. But yeah, I mean, he's, he's a sort of build and, you know, he's got the sort of engine that you need in these sort of games against these opposition. And so, and he's going to be in Australia again next, playing against Australia next year, realistically. Like, and then I guess off the bench, McMeekin, I've always rated him. Yeah, I think, yeah, again, my I've worry is I've been a big McMeekin fan, so I'm very happy with, with how he did. And again, didn't let down. Burgess, <laughs> solid, but I expected more. I didn't expect more, but that's because I also saw him last year in Tonga. Well, Tonga. yeah. He just doesn't seem to have the engine for this level anymore. Like, he ain't going World Cup in two years. Well, that's kind of what, yeah. I mean, I say I expected more. I expect more from his name in the South, the South Sydney prop in our squad to come over and do that. By his standards, that was a very solid game and he did well. But the problem is, it's a bit like the whole Chris Hill conundrum. Are his standards really enough at this level anymore? Yeah, he's going to be there next week, though. And it, you see, that's interesting. Because he's the one I drop for Thompson. No, I agree, but I also think, and we'll come on to this. But it's Sean he, winning, and he won't do. He's not going to not play in Sember in both, but he's also not going to drop Bateman. So Knowles is definitely dropping out for me. Knowles shouldn't have even met the squad. I no, mean, I know we know that anyway, mate. <laughs> That's an all separate thing. But I can like, see... Let alone playing. I think Knowles goes out for Ensemble and then I, I think, obviously, one of them goes out for Thompson. Um, I'm sorry. KPP needs to go. I, I disagree. I mean, he's... he's Worst he's, player on the pitch in an England shirt. Burgess. Was anonymous for, like, a good 70 minutes of that. Again, I don't think he offered the strike that... I've seen him doing in NRL this season his strike on the edge is, is great and that's what you're expecting from him. I don't think he had a good game necessarily. I don't think he were awful. And I think he's the sort of player though, like you're not going to a World Cup in two years and not playing. But we both know ball. Bateman's not getting dropped. Yeah, no, I, I, needs to start and you've somehow got to show on Morgan Smith is in this. If, yeah. Hmm. Does so Smith going to go? Get a game here really though. That's what my, would be my thinking. Which, if not, that is absolutely ludicrous. Because I don't think again, will. 10 times the player Morgan Knowles is. I know. Well, Matty Nicholson's 10 times the player Knowles is. Yeah. Curry is. I mean, Curry, the weird one for me is, why is Curry at 18th man and not in December? I so suppose you're thinking if someone gets injured in the warm-up, you can shoe on him in at centre if you need to, and he'll cover you at... Yeah, but Second you could row thirteen. Would you rather play Curry in centre and Piers Paul in second row, or if it came to let's say Newman got injured and that's what you have to do? What KPP in have... centre and in centre yeah. in second row? Yeah, yeah. I suppose the problem. I don't know. It's a weird one. <laughs> it's one of them. It's tough, man. You probably it's... have to move less players around if you have Curry because you're only moving one. You're doing a straight swap. Oh, yeah. No, Unless it's like you've lost Wellsby or something daft. In which case, which is still moving one out because you're putting Lewis to full back and carry on bench. Yeah. And then Radley probably gets you. Radley does hooker and then you just change 13 out. Yeah. Um, Whereas with Ensemble, you potentially have to then move two players. Yeah. I do think Ensemble gets his on bench or or players in some capacity. You can't put him on wing. No, but I could see him. He could start sent. He could start in second row and Bateman off bench or Bateman at loose, Radley on bench. I don't. 
I don't know, really. There's a few costume. ways they could do it and fit him in, yeah. Because one thing we've not considered yet, and, it, you know, where does Chris Hill fit in all this? Nowhere. <laughs> Absolutely nowhere. <laughs> no, I agree. I agree, man. I'm only joking, but... But yeah, Him I and Sangari as Salford's prop for next year is going to be a very interesting season. It's a good, that's a good little one-two, but because they're completely different props. Um, and what one of them's good at, the other one's not good. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, Sangari defensively poor, you know, poor motor on him, poor fitness. Chris Hill's just going to give you... you really say that he's shit and Chris Hill's good at everything? No, no, but then, and like, Sangari, sorry, is go forward at times, like... Indiv- like his close contact meters are definitely better than Crystal's. Have you watched any rugby this year? Yeah, why? Why are you going to go against everything I've just said? I know no, you I don't say really his close contact that. meters are also completely well under par for somebody of his size and stature. Well, no, I know you're not bothered about him going, but he's just, you know what I mean? The different types of props. Yes. It's like Lazzoni and fucking. I just won't say one's good at something when they're not. No, maybe not then. Maybe I'm being being uh, too nice to Sangare there rather than, than Hill. Hill does a job, man. You'd, Hill at Leeds would go off, you know. Oh, I Hill, do not want Hill at Leeds. Hill at Leeds is the exact sort of prop you need, mate. You need a yeah. prop who's just going to play rugby and just do the job. You've I'd rather it. bring bloody Matt Pryor back out of retirement. Exa- yeah, fuck it, mate. Get peak. Chris Hill is... is This is a fucking bald claim here, right? Chris oh, Hill man. is... Jamie Peacock from Wish, mate. Is that sort of yeah. prop? That's what you need. What do you have? Who does that? Who? What prop do you have currently? Who does that job? You've just got props. Lazoni and Sangari had no more. Goudemond won't even a prop. There's a reason one. why we've got rid of two of the three you've just no, named. I know that, and that is the reason why. And I'm not saying I'm just talking pure last season. You missed that sort. Of prop. It, well, we don't need him because we've got Big Cooper. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. If you and you've got the, we obviously we don't know exactly what these guys are going to be like, but you trust in Arthur, which is fair enough. But I mean, we're going on off subject here, aren't we? Um, on the England situation, but yeah, I hope Ensemble gets game time anyway. Um, because it'd be good to see him and really, so yeah, Hopefully. yeah. I mean, and bit again, I mean, Bateman, we were t- like. Bateman again were fine. He had a good, had a good game. To be fair, did Bateman? It's not like it, Bateman's a bad player, and it, it's hard this because you see all shit. And when the team got announced, everyone's giving it shit. Why is Bateman playing over in Semba? Wayne don't have a clue. Da, da, da. But then you look at Wayne's record, and realistically, you've got to back him to a point because for, I know Samoa wasn't as good as we thought they were going to be, but still at points, England looked really good. Like you got to say, England looked good. They play we play good rugby. Fairly strong defensively, like it's you've got to trust him to a degree, I think. And I people give him someone else and style him to not look like a scuffy tramp on the teller. You get blooming, <laughs> you get blooming gardener coming on, and at the very least, he's got a buttoned up shirt, and it looks like someone's let drunken grandpa in when Sean Wayne rocks up. What just with, with shirt on. open, not even using proper words half the time, yeah. just wigging slang. And with like the most homeless looking beard you've ever seen. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. come on, I appreciate you on crutches, but you can at least like you can put some effort in. <laughs> That's an all separate thing, though, mate. We can't judge him too much on that. But. No, it's a problem that British Rugby League has altogether in terms of its the presentation of those who broadcast and are around it, which is an entirely different pod. Oh, no, yeah. That sounds like one for when we're rinsing context. We've got nothing to talk about. Yeah. But, I mean, hopefully as well, I mean, this is going back onto what plans for podcast, but we are hoping in off-season as well, we'll have some guests on, um, which will be good as well and add, adds to the content, I guess. See, see, we can drag out from the woodwork this year. I reckon we can get Chris Hill on, mate. And you can look at, I can look him in the eye and tell him that I think he's... Jamie Peacock's region. I don't even know what to say to this anymore. And we need to get Harry on as well for that pod because Harry's got something against them sort of props, and it will. We'll get Harry on and we'll say why. Well, you get Michael Lawrence on for yeah. that, and we'll get, dance. get the Smith double act on. Oh, that'd be good though. That yeah. 
Wow. Yeah, right. just surprise him with it and just get his work players his shit on. on, on Who is that? Oh, just get, get his mate Billy back. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, wow. <laughs> oh, we'll get... um. We'll get Lily on to address the rumours that he's off to Keyfliff and Harry can lead that and he could, you know, go in with all rumours or not even rumours. Tom, Tom Holmes and his whole fallout and leaving Bradford thing that totally happened. And since then, Tom Holmes has had the old sort of situation with the cancer, come back, played a, a really good season for Bradford and then signed a new contract. <laughs> so it couldn't have been further from the truth. Yeah, but it's fine because Jared Samet didn't like training. Yeah. Because he preferred it under a coach he never played for. And ironically now, the coach isn't there anymore. And he's still fucking not. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's just... What's your prediction? Do you think England 2-0 Samoa at the weekend? I bloody hope so. I do, because I think... And it's I tough also to... think this is going to look really ridiculous. Having a two-game test series, which is stupid anyway, to finish one all. Yeah, then what, what is the bloody point of that? Did you get like a penalty shootout or something, you know, whether they do kicking for a girl or something. It's gonna be deciding fucking points difference, isn't it? <laughs> which, if that happens, I'd back England to be all right because I don't see Samoa like. I mean, I don't right. know if that's actually what's going to happen. It'd be something stupid like that that everyone will claim. Oh, we won. We had better points difference. Or, or it'll be disciplinary record. Or who's got least yellow cards? And England will get like yellowed in last minute or something like that. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, it's hard with Samoa. And it was similar with Tonga. Like, if we'd have played these games over there, it would have been a completely different story. It's hard for a team to travel over. And we'll then test it'll be next year, won't it? Yeah, although if... if Australia are coming over here then. That will be Which a... I mean, well, actually, let's be honest. What will happen is we'll schedule it all, we'll sell the tickets out, we'll actually do really well, NRL will throw a fucking hissy fit and put spit the dummy out again. Like, oh, we're not coming now because it's, more, it's not 24 degrees. We don't <laughs> want to play the World Cup this year. We're... And be, cry a bit more and it won't happen. And then we'll end up. We'll go from having an Ashes free free match Ashes Test series to playing to play in France or Scotland and Ireland. Um, oh, we'll, get, we'll get exotic. We might get the Dutch. Oh, mm. just give us Europe All Stars and we'd still beat them. Let's be honest. Jesus. Realistically, it'd probably end up being like an. We do his PNG idea that we had. We're all UK based PNG boys. Oh, but Jesus. <laughs> the thing is, if this happens, it's going to be so shit. No, I, I think, though, by the sounds of it, it looks like Australia want to come over and do it, which I'm surprised about. And I do think we can have some competitive games with them as well, and that's... It is a big... T- I would have liked, and I think, as it England, the would she should have wanted to be going over and playing in Australia. You don't want to be playing... What will, will we have had? The World Cup in over here. Tonga Test Series over here, Samoa Test Series over here, Australia Test Series over here. That's four straight years. He won't have played over there since the GB tour of like PNG and all when we got absolutely... Pre-COVID, cut. pre-COVID, am I right? Am I yeah, 2019. Yeah. That's what I'm, I'm saying. So then to go into a World Cup over there, it's going to be tough because it is different conditions and, and things like that. So... I'd have loved for us to go over there and somehow be chucked into special guests in the Pacific Championships and be playing games against Fiji, PNG, Samoa, Tonga, Australia. Not all of them, obviously. We can only play a few of them. Like, but give me games against like Fiji. Or, like That sort of thing we just never play. When have England last played Fiji? Because we just Probably never get a World Cup about a decade ago. That's what I mean, just ages ago. I'd love to see a game like that. Like, um, and it's them games that we're just getting yeah, started. You're going to get the basic essence of it next year because you're going to get to see Harry Smith and George Williams kicking high balls to, Mi- to Mike Acevo. Oh, I, I set you up for a decent trans- transition at that then, yeah. You did. Um, who's, right, are we, are we done with England? Oh, yeah, t- I'm, done with England. <laughs> I'm reckoning England win it. Um, maybe a tighter game. A couple of yellow cards, I think. Does anyone care there's a Rouges involved? Yeah, that's true. That's the only reason we're there. Um, and I'll probably and Arsenal are playing at half twelve away at Newcastle, so I'll probably be crying before kick off anyway. So. Oh, excellent! Come on, Newcastle. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Leeds. 
who starts on the wing for Leeds next year? What's the situation before we end this party? <laughs> who knows? What would you do as a Leeds fan? Not assigned half these players. <laughs> I reckon, I don't even know what I reckon to be honest. Maybe Hanley fullback, you know. Where's Miller going? Fucking 18th man. Nah. But then, no, then I've set you up that you should have said, where's Nicholson Watton going then if he's going 18th man? Nicholson Watton. I'm, I'm not engaging with that stupid <laughs> joke. <laughs> but no, in all seriousness, it's a good, It's a, we've spoke about this through season. I'm going to see those start. Yeah, but then Hall, I mean, off the back I've of seen, it. I've seen that apparently United can play second row, which is interesting. Just carry him on. But yeah, but do you, I don't know, because we've, like, there'll be injuries through the season, won't they? And, and you've, like, look at what happened to Fussy too. I'm not saying Sevo will come over and, and get injured necessarily, but you just never know, do you? I don't get too excited, I guess. And it's good yeah. that you've got good depth, because we always spoke about, realistically, that third choice winger you get. Could be you could trust one at young lads from academy, which they've got. There's a good few coming through that are decent. Or do you trust you know get someone in like a Louis Roberts esque player um, who's maybe covers your centre wing, that sort of thing. But I think it's a good signing from you, really. I think it, it definitely rises, it raises your ceiling. I think realistically, him and Hall are better than any wingers outside of Hamlet that you've had this year. You know the other options that you've had. Whether it's been obviously young lads have got potential, obviously got both better than Louis Roberts, both better than Fussy Tua, um, who I know availability is his worst issue, but still, even when he's played, I think these two are are better, really. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, and yeah, well, you've been harsh because Louis Roberts isn't a winger, remember? Did you see that came back up again the other day? Yeah, it's always, mate, it's everywhere. And he's, as I seen, he's off back to Lee. Have I seen that right? I've not seen anything on him, so you might have done it. Were, it. Uh, it were a rumour in one of the league groups. I don't know if it were like a set. It's not a, an announced thing, because we definitely would have would have both seen that. Um, but so I think that'd be... I mean, I know he's leaving Leeds, isn't he? That's the... He's gone, yeah. Yeah, he's out of contract, so... I also wouldn't hate him at Bradford, I guess, but... Oh, don't let Harry hear you say that. I, I mean, mate, like... I've I got... got some ones who were an arsehole. <laughs> I don't care if he's an arsehole, like as long as he's good, all right, does a good job at rugby, which at this level he would. Especially because I mean, you had him on dual reg for one game and he was shit, yeah. But I don't know, I wouldn't hate it. Like on a permanent, mm. I think there's worse players we could get. I mean, apparently, obviously, we're still in negotiations with Tafua, apparently, who's apparently off to York now, right? Apparently, Tafua, this is what I've seen in one of these balls groups, right? Apparently, Tafua's asking for 80k a year to stay at Bradford. He's not worth that. No, I, I think he's great, but he's not worth that. No, and I think that is bollocks, mate. I, I do not trust that. If that is true, then they're right to not renew him. But then is that why he's off to York? Because they've got, you know... They've I'll got all be... that mile of money to respend. Yeah, that's what I mean. But, yeah. 80 yeah. k that is ridiculous if that is true. Yeah, it makes you wonder what rest of them are on. Because, like... I don't get me wrong, I think Pelly and Ockenbar are on like full time wages. Like, don't get me wrong, they'll be on, I reckon they're on in 50. Yeah, but I also wonder how, if any of that is not actually being paid by Bradford, considering both are still under contracts at Hull FC. Yeah, definitely for last seat. No, but now we've got them signed now, haven't we? Because the one. Yeah. Um, but, but then yeah, we've so got we'll... Mike Acevo signed, but Paramount are still wage contribution in him. Yeah, so maybe, maybe then, maybe there is some sort of, I don't know, way of. Because it frees up some cap for Hull FC and gets them the quota. And yeah. they're only having to say pay a fraction of the player. So he's maybe enough that he's not in, they're not in their top, however many that count towards the cap. Yeah. But I guess a lot of stuff like for championship level, like, you know, if Bulls get like to Saints, 50k to Saints isn't a lot to pay out, like to get O'Carroll out of contract. It might be more than that, it might be less. But to Bulls, who don't have a cap, by the way, we don't have a cap, cap in championship, that's a whole other pl- couple of players, potentially, that you can get through door. Or extra money that you can put towards a coach that you then bring in. So, I don't know. It's a, it's a lot of money to be spending when you don't even have a coach. What if coach don't, don't work? Well, that's almost, I think, quite concerning with a lot of the recruitment you've made. 
Yeah, although I think a lot he's of obviously it is... he's been very involved in the last two years with the squad building. And if another coach comes in and says, actually, I don't want this particular player. Yeah, maybe get a coach and who's got like prejudice against anyone who's not English, then we're fucked, aren't we? Because half the fucking squads. Well, I mean, I'm not saying you hire a bloody EDL national. <laughs> you, if so, going to Bradford's the wrong bloody job to take for a start. Yeah, that no, that is one of the most ethnically diverse cities in the UK. And yes, I'm being politically correct about this. But yeah, he's because he's had it's such a different approach to what any other manager really takes in the championship of going thinking. Well, there's obviously a lot of talent in England that that everyone knows about. Why not tap up and go down under and look at some of the players who... I, well, and there's probably a reason that no one's ever done that. And the large part of that is going to be, it's going to cost them a significant amount of money to warrant relocating their entire lives to England. It's worth it's right, right, it's part-time. And I mean, you look at who you've brought in. I mean, who who you pulled from that? Fulton, who's gone home. Yeah. Lehman, who's not been kept on and wasn't that good. Yeah, but Fulton were good, though. You've got to give it Fulton. He were, he were good. He were good at the start. He tailed off towards the end. Which I think what, he was going home. Yeah, the home, going home thing and, and stuff like that. Not that Bradford didn't try and offer him and keep him, to be fair. Um, I know Lehman will let go, but... Yeah, but, I mean, it might well be that he chose to go, but it's like once he knew he'd got that and it was sorted, it's like almost he didn't care and we're just going through the emotions more. Yeah, yeah. Um, who else did you get? Bayless... Solid. Solid prop, yeah. Don't do much wrong. Um, I guess Suter's the big one, because Suter's come up, well, the initial one, really, I guess. Yeah. Came over and really sort of... Yeah. Had a hot and cold season by the end of it. Oh, no, yeah. Well, it was by no means perfect, but he almost needed to be, because like, he would definitely have been signed in Super League. Like, there were points at season where he, he were, there were talks before he renewed that he was going to be going, like, Salford and stuff, and leaving leaving Bulls and obviously that never happened. I don't necessarily think he were ready for that. I think he's one of the best hookers in the league but yeah. he's still a young lad at the end of the day um, and obviously Ott as well. I know you're not as high on Ott but I think he's a he's a solid you don't he's get in an Ott, Ott, Ott acquisition. I'm not I'll tell you what the thing about Ott though is there's only one hooker in the championship who is a better backup hooker than him and that's Pulisier oh. at Toulouse realistically like what other backup, champion, yeah Fair. Like he starts from the majority of the teams in the championship outside of probably the teams who finished in playoffs this year. Like, yeah, so. Bev have got Jones, who's great, and, and stuff like that. But so, yeah, no, so what London thinking, have got yet. Well, no, we, we don't do it, I guess. But probably Davis, I imagine Davis would stick on. And I know obviously Leyland's gone. Um, Bill Leyland's gone. I don't, is he, he's KR, isn't he, Bill Leyland, the hooker? Yeah, Bill's gone to KR, all he's gone to Warrant, it's Warrant and yeah. Yeah. Per- this is a really good podcast, so she'll be part of the signings. Oh, yeah, we don't need to go. Let's to save them for the previews. Oh, mate, yeah. Can't wait for the championship prediction, man. I mean, uh, we probably should go back and see how we did, actually, against our... Uh... I could probably think off the top of my head, like, I think you put... I think we got Wakey to lose right. And then I think we, you put Bradford third. I think I put Fev third and Bradford fourth, potentially. I can't remember. We need we, we, the problem what we do is we just do these. I don't even, I don't even think we wrote them down, which before we end this. Go on right. On this is an internal task. Go do the Super League and Championship predictions, see where we got and we need to do a reacting to video. Yeah, we could do, to be fair. I don't know how, how we have to look through the whole bloody... That's the thing, we should have probably... Um... Oh, we don't produce that much content that it's not hard to find. We don't have to do it with the loads. full podcast again, aren't I? Because so, there's no visual of it at all. That's what I'm saying, we should have wrote it down at the time, which we need to do. Well, we'll have to do an actual visual for the reaction, it's fine, I'm sure we can plan it to work. Oh yeah, that's that's not the end of the world. Let me come up with the ideas and then you just have to somehow edit oh, them to actually I've happen. got, I've got, i found my, oh, I've got mine. Oh, I don't have mine, mine long gone. I've got it on notes, look, uh, so. All right, well, mine are long gone. Look, stop ruining the reacting to... <laughs> I'm giving you an extra bit of content here. Just take it so we'd have to yeah, think about like it. 
Uh, yeah, that's good. A good video or pod to do, to be fair. So yeah, um, but yeah, should we end this week's now? Hopefully, England do some, and next week we'll be reviewing the series as a whole. Hopefully, we'll have some more information on the Australia Test next year, and we can we make would. it. Him. No, we don't know where Magic is next year. Maybe we'll know that. We'll we'll know some more stuff, and there'll be some more news and and stuff like that. Uh, Again, maybe. why do we not know this? Tickets should be going on sale as soon as the Samoa Test finishes, with venues and dates confirmed. Yeah, get people in the mood for it. There should be hype going into this about what's going to happen next year if we win and be able to buy tickets that evening yeah. while the euphoria and the rugby emotion is still there. It's like the end of Magic Weekend. What should have been the closing thing after the final game? The nine, nine o'clock or whatever time, finish, the reveal of where the next location is. Yeah. And the ticket package is on sale. Get more joined up, Rugby League. Do better. Oh, magic, mate. That's just sprouted a great idea, right? Maybe like half time of the last match on Magic Weekend, right? I know this only counts really for one at days, so it may be the most logistical thing. But do like a, a thing, somewhere in the middle of the pitch, which like reveal it, like under a curtain, like a mod, a Lego. Who's mod- mad? If this was happening this year, it would be Huddersfield and Cass that got this glamorous <laughs> thing. <laughs> But that's why it doesn't necessarily work. But reveal it and then say to everyone in the stadium at that point who's got tickets for that day, if you got, you can now go on like early access tickets almost. If you've got like a code that gets sent to the person who's got, the or ticket. just sent to everyone who's bought a magic ticket. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They get, like, you can't do that on. though because if we're at Ellen Road, the Wi-Fi in the stadium is fucking crap. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you get the idea of what I'm saying. Though, I get the idea, yeah. Sort of thing to the people who bought the previous year. Um, and yeah, the problem things. is until you actually start having events that sell out, the whole early access thing is kind of pointless unless you offer a discount incentive. Yeah, which is what I'm saying. Do a discount, which here. they do for season ticket holders anyway. So yeah. whilst I like the idea, I don't think it probably works. No, and also bring back summer bash. Why not? It don't work. We can't do it. We've got odd number of teams now. Well, you can't do it this year. No, no. But then, I'm doing it with 12, I guess, a bit better. But, oh, I don't I'm going to say that's what we do with Super League. And, and also, can we find out when the 1895 Cup draw is, please? Because that's Bradford's only chance of a trophy. Thank you. Um, can't wait for you to be knocked out by York away. <laughs> Get knocked out in group by uh, Jewsbury and Keithley. Can't wait. Yeah, I don't know what we're going to do about groups next year. Do you know what? That's a completely other podcast. Oh, the, the good thing, the big thing about the 1895, that will be, maybe I think it should be, either that or a Challenge Cup game will be Gull's first game, professional game. That is exciting. So that is, that's what I mean. It is an exciting time. And it's always good at that, actually. Be there for the momentous off. Well, who, if it's 1895, realistically, it's going to be. Probably Newcastle and York, in it? How is... Oh, yeah, probably, it is going, Because it was Newcastle Where are London it. going? London are off... London's easy. Cornwall, Cornwall are in it this year, mate. We're making sure of that. Unless they sell the club to Bedford. Yeah, which they can still go down and play with London. London and... That's like more logistical. Like, yeah. Well, London to Cornwall's fine, because half the bloody people in London have the second houses over there, anyway. Yeah, and then Midlands... As well, probably in that one. We'll do a pod on this bit. We'll do a pod off before they announce it. We'll do a pod on groups because it's going right, to rounding out. It's not hurricane season anymore. Pod's done. Goodbye. Yeah. See ya. <laughs>